Welcome back everybody. Uh, this is a bit of an update to the um, budget open baffle speaker, speaker system, originally designed by Martin King and I've moved on a touch um, from his original design. Uh, <clears throat> and what we're now going to use is the Mark Audio Alpair 11MS, which is a, a bigger driver altogether. Uh, the crossover is the same, in as much as we got a 2.4 millionary inductor 40 microfarad cap on this, and the eminence crossover doesn't change. Uh, I've tweaked the baffle in Basta uh, to make it work and on this occasion we don't have to use the divider uh, and I think the main reason is that this Alpair 11MS has a much bigger motor element and doesn't get influenced by uh, any vibration and or air movement from the back of this or the front of this 15 inch eminence base driver. Uh, I'm going to go into um, a few things on the crossover. As I say there's no L pad on this, I haven't used an L pad, haven't needed to, even though this is a bigger driver. Uh, it's a nicer sound, um, more texture, more tonal quality to it. Uh, it's less, I'll, I'll say peaky, might not be the right word, but it's less peaky. Uh, so, but it blends very well with the 15 inch. So there's a basic scheme. Anyway, what I've done, as I say, I've adjusted this in Basta to get them to work well. And there's some dimensions. The actual baffle board size hasn't changed. The legs again are open for your interpretation. This is just my interpretation of a couple of legs that I've done. Uh, glued it all together, bolted it together, um, wired it up. I'm very impressed with the end result. So let's just take a look at this uh, drive unit. As I say, it's a substantially larger drive unit. And it comes in this box as a Gen 2, Generation 2. Oh, I don't know what the MS stands for. At this juncture. There's a nice bit of packaging. There's a drive in itself. Beautifully made. Uh, this is uh, a composite material, I believe. The actual chassis basket. Huge magnet. Terminals here. And we have, this is the negative side, it says on the back of the basket. And this is the positive side. I don't know whether you can see that. Yeah, just... Um, and of course the opening, the cutout, uh, is 144mm, it's quite a weighty thing. Uh, it's very nicely made. Uh, it comes with the gasket, the, I have already put the gasket on, uh, but it's a sticky back. And you, just pe you peel it off of the 3M supplied backing tape, peel it off and you just stick it on. It's a little bit fiddly but it's no effort really. Uh, so that's that's what we're using along with the Eminence 15 inch. And it comes um, with its screws. There's three down this side and two in there. That's a bit of uh, for mounting. Uh, uh, they're M3 again, but they're slightly slightly longer. Uh, good quality piece of kit. 
So I'll just pop that back in there for safekeeping for now. Uh, there's it was uh, an issue I had trying to get hold of the 2.4. Henry uh, inductors. Uh, my usual supplier, Falcon, their machine, their winding machine has failed, and it will, uh, I was informed that it's going to be some weeks before uh, it would be back in service. <coughs> Excuse me. So I had to go to Willie's Hi Fi. Uh, very good overnight service. Um, so in this case uh, it came as a 2.7 and it was 2.7 millionary and I needed a 2.4 so you just unwind you take off some windings and in this case uh, it was 2 meters to get down to 2.39 and the way you do it, you take off, I don't know, let's say five windings, you scrape off the insulation, take a measurement, and you keep going until such times that you get to where you are. And I think it's about two meters I had to take off this. This is one millimeter copper wire, insulated, obviously enameled. Um, and we're just going to see if I can get this to read again after doing that. Two point three eight milli Henrys. Um, well, that'll do me. Uh, one percent less than one percent accuracy, uh, it, and it is temperature dependent. So um, it's a bit colder today, but just goes to show that it can be done. If you can't get the exact what you want, just buy the next one up and unwind it step by step. Um, I've put 5% but it's better than 5%. I've even put some weight on there. So this, this one weighs 274 grams. And once I knew that, um, I did this one's 272 to get the same. So just a slightly different winder. But that's how to get where you want to be with your inductors. Just a little bit of a know-how. Thought I'd share that with you. If you can't get what you want, buy the next one up and wind it back or unwind it. <coughs> So just be wary of this, uh, this is a Janssen Audio Inductor 2.2 Micro Henry, oh, I can't remember where I bought it from now, this is quite old, uh, a few years ago I bought these for a project and I couldn't use them in the end um, because of this, when you actually measure it, this is, I mean I haven't played with this, I've put it in circuit and tried, uh, but it wouldn't work properly for me. So when we actually measure this, 2.2, we get 2.068, it's not even 2.1. Um, is that acceptable or not? I'm going to say not, which is again why I'm suggesting that you up the size of the inductor and then unwind it um, for what you want. Far more accurate way of doing it. Uh, capacitors are 20%, uh, you can get 5% and 1%. And again, that is that they vary massively. Um, but you've just got to do the best you can with what you've got. And does it really matter? Probably, at the end of the day, DIY, we're not mass produced, we'd like to get it right, wouldn't we? Uh, <clears throat> the capacitors, these are audio filer, um, this is a 50 microfarad, and in actual fact it's 49.4, well within tolerance, that's a well good one. Uh, let's try this, this is an Answire Super Sound. Let's measure this, I haven't measured this, um, 
I have used it in circuit. It should be a 10, 10 at 450 volts. Let's see exactly what it says, what it measures at. <coughs> 9.6 that's close enough for me that's not bad nearly 9.7 so that's within its 5% better than uh, what have we got here iron core this one should be a 5 let's have a measure Four point nine nine. That's very good. I think I bought these from Falcon Electronics or Falcon Audio, uh, and I asked for um, better than three percent, and they did the deal. They did it well. But uh, these are quite good as well. These Kimber caps. But this is ten percent. This is within ten percent. So I've strapped two of these together. So that this should be ten. Let's see. I haven't done this before, but uh, just as a a little bit of a wreck, eh? a little bit of heads up, I suppose. Let's see. We should have ten microfarads. They are all discharged. Nine point six five six. Yeah, that's okay. I think that's well within ten percent. So um, not bad. So if you haven't got one of these, go and buy one. Uh, very useful for all sorts. This will do inductors, capacitors, and resistors. Uh, and if you want to splash it into the DIY market, buy one of these, which is a, a semiconductor component analyzer. Checks all your MOSFETs and JFETs and everything else. And now for something completely different. It's something I've used over the years. I didn't think of it. I'm an implementer. I'm not an inventor. Uh, <clears throat> how do you stop a cabinet? Pretend this is a, a speaker wall in a cabinet. And the drive units energise and these vibrate quite a bit. So you'll see on many speakers there's lots of cross bracing internally to stop this vibration. Uh, years ago I had some name DBL speakers and SBLs and everything else down that road uh, and due to some flood damage where we were living at the time the DBLs were written off by the insurance so they were they were absolutely buggered uh, so I stripped them down and rebuilt them into something else another story but in that stripping down process I noticed on the DBL on every panel on the inside of the enclosure was one of these which is a piece of aluminium with a bit of uh, foam quite compliant um, and they were stuck right in the center of each panel so with discussions years later um, with a man that used to work for name uh, he said ah that that's a dampening uh, device as the panel vibrates he said the energy is dissipated through this so this vibrates microscopically really uh, but it's a way of getting around cross bracing and indeed in the uh, SBL uh, quite a large enclosure about 300 square there was no cross bracing at all but they used to put these in the middle of each panel like that glue them on and that would stop or reduce it's not going to stop it but it's going to reduce the resonant element of the panel without cross bracing if you get my meaning so it's something i'm going to try with an open baffle actually um, on the areas that are open or more prone i'm going to stick that in a, in the area and see how we get and just a, another thing i'd like to share with you just a bit of interest 
I think other companies did it as well as Name, uh, but it was something they championed. They never spoke about it, I don't think. And it was only because I had the fortune, if you like, of losing a pair of DBLs that I could strip them down. All the wood was all twisted and busted and the drive units were completely useless. Um, but it gave me an opportunity to see what was going on inside. Anyway, a little bit more information. I uh, hope you find it of an interest. Um, I think that will do from me. Um, apart from just a note on the sound. How does this drive unit sound compared to the smaller 7s? Uh, this is... Uh, how can I say this? It's, I would suggest this is in a different league really. It's... It's twice the money, so a pair of these are £100, as opposed to £100 for a pair of 7s, L pair, or Pulvia, I think that's how you pronounce it. But the sonic qualities of this are far superior. The textures that you get from it, the level of detail uh, seems to be better. I suppose it's like going from a Mini to a Bentley um, in, in that realm. It's a, a far superior drive unit. Uh, the construction and manufacturer is very similar but they've just up the size of it. It's got a far nicer tonal quality. So if you are building these open baffle, small open baffle units, just consider for your extra hundred pounds if you're going to plump, go for these. Uh, it's a next level up if you like. Uh, so something to consider. Um, that's it from me for now, it's just a short one. Uh, it's Laverda, the implementer, keep safe, keep well. Uh, we've got some more videos lined up. Um, I'm actually going to do a trio, uh, two 15 inch drive units uh, and a full range drive unit in the middle or on the top. Uh, I'm doing the drawings, I've, I've already done the drawings, I just want to tweak them to make it easier for everybody. Uh, and this is going to be a basic passive crossover. So for now, thanks for watching. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Much appreciated. Uh, thanks for all the comments, um, all the kind comments. Much appreciated. Uh, if you want to start hitting that bell, you can start hitting it now. Many thanks. Bye.